Scripture for today is taken from the books of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowships, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favors of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily to those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. This morning, we are very pleased to have our Pastor Tan with us to bring God's word to us. Uh, allow me to briefly introduce Pastor Tan to us. Okay. Pastor Tan was an electrical engineer. He he began his career in the IT line for nine years. He's the he is in his twenty fourth year as pastor in DUMC. His passion is discipling people to step up as potential leaders in their field of calling. Uh, okay. okay, may maybe invite Pastor Tan to bring God word to us today. A very good morning. Our Lord's uh, face will shine upon you. If you don't mind, I take off my mask because uh, the vapor, uh, the breath, it will fog up my lenses. Uh, thank you for your understanding. It is so good to be in the house of God. Amen. Yeah. As we were worshiping and praising the Lord, uh, I just sense of a word for some of us here. And as uh, even the prayer points that were led by Chi Kai, there was a mention of this, that uh, some of us are worried and the anxiety of life have been a burden and may crush us. The Lord reminds us uh, in Matthew, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Really, the trust and the pivot and the focus is upon the Lord Jesus Christ no matter what we are going through. So, the word for you uh, from Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not be dismayed, for I am your God. Do not be sad. Do not be downhearted. For I will strengthen you. I will help you, and I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. God is good. He will watch over you, and he will carry you through. Amen. Would like to uh, thank uh, Reverend Gowry and the leadership of this church for the invitation to bring forth the word here. It is always a delight to really see the continuing blessing of the Lord upon his bride, other churches, that truly we are here for a purpose. Amen. would like to show and introduce uh, myself a little bit and also my family. This is my family. If you look at it, wow, quite a big family. Yes, I have uh, four children. I have two boys and two girls, yeah. Um, the eldest is a boy, boy, girl, girl, boy. And there is a latest addition, my number fifth child, which is my daughter-in-law, yeah. My eldest son got married uh, slightly over five months ago and it's such a delight and a joy that in the midst of this uh, so-called uh, pre-MCO that we still manage to get the wedding through. That's my wife that's standing beside me, Fong Lin, and my eldest son, Joe. And uh, next to him is uh, his wife, Kid May, and then my Number two daughter, Valerie, my number three, Eileen, and my youngest, who is uh, preparing for his old levels, Jonadab. Okay, not Jonathan, eh? Jonadab. Okay. 
I am following the mandate of God in the book of Genesis. You know, be fruitful and multiply. Okay? And God is good. God is good. Amen? Yeah. Would like to bring forth the word of God in regards to the small group benefits. If you look at the the photo there, you will see that it is such a fun thing to belong to a small group. This is the group of young adults that meet in my house. And they gave me a surprise when I returned from my regular badminton game. And what happened was my wife sort of shouted at me and I was a little bit upset. Then she started to attack me. Attack me by um, throwing water balloons, and then the rest of uh, the cell group members, they came in and did likewise. We had a ball of a time. That was really great fun. And till this day, it is etched in my mind. Okay. And uh, in DUMC, one of our core habits uh, is having fun. And as we go through life, in walking in this journey, in growing closer and to, to be like him. All of this we need to take note. Let us have fun in this life because really life in this world is really short. Yeah. All over the world, there's a movement in churches that has happened for a number of years now. And actually, it has also happened in the Old Test, uh, in the New Testament. Yeah that there are gatherings in small groups. And some of these small groups are known as uh, what I've read in your bulletin, small groups or cell groups. In DMC, it is known as cell groups. Why we call them cell groups? Because the word cell, it's, it's an, organis an organism that is multiplying, that is growing. So that's why we call it cell. It doesn't mean the cell in the jail or in the prison. Huh? Please no take note of that. Others, they may call it live group, connect group, foundation group, and support group. Whatever they are called, there is a purpose. There is an end goal or a so-called a finished game in being or belonging to a small group. So we will hear a little bit about that. Firstly, let us establish where do Christians gather in the book of Acts, so that we know that it's not something out of the blue. It is foundational. It is from the Word of God. When I did an electronic search in the Bible for the word house or homes, there were close to a thousand hits. In fact, 929 hits. If there are so many hits, it must mean something to be gathered in homes. And some of the notable references where God's people gathered in houses and homes are found in the book of Acts. And let us look at the passages here in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 2. It says that when the day of Pentecost came, Pentecost is after the 50th day of the Passover something to be remembered, yeah? And they were all together in one place and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Wow! The wind of God, the presence of His touched the people and something dramatic happened that people that were not from Jerusalem, they were astounded and they know that it was the Lord's presence in the house. And then in Acts uh, chapter 2 verse 46, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. And as we know, when we are in homes, this is where we makan, where we fellowship, where we eat. And this is a place when we eat, this is where we grow closer to one another. And of course, the breaking of the bread here is the love feast, the fellowship meal, 
or when we are in the gathering of the church, this is the Holy Communion. This is also a time where they remember when they broke bread, what the Lord did for them on the cross. And then in Acts 5 verse 42, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. You see again, it says the gathering from house to house, not only one house. And what do they do? They basically, the apostle, the leaders, they actually taught the word. They also prayed together. And they were having an intention there. They were proclaiming the good news of Christ. Then in Acts 16, verse 40, after Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house where they met with the brothers and encouraged them. You see, Paul and Silas, they found solace, they found safety and security where they remembered the homes where they were cared for, where they were sustained and nurtured. When the Lord miraculously delivered them from prison, the first thought, they went to the house. And that's where they know there's that comfort, the security, and the people of God. They were praying and interceding for them. And today's message uh, that was read by Jonathan is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. I will not uh, read the passage again. But I'd like you to pivot your eyes and focus your eyes upon the red fonts, the word together. When you look at a passage or a paragraph, when there is an emphasis of a certain word, please pay attention. The Lord, the Holy Spirit is trying to speak something to us. You saw the word together? It is mentioned how many times? Wonderful. Please uh, converse with me, connect with me. Huh? Thank you so much. The first, it says that together, all believers were together and everything in common. They were united together. Okay. Yesterday I saw one of the brothers was uh, wearing Manchester United. Okay. Uh, just to clarify, uh, some of you thought that I support the team. No, I don't. Okay. I support the team that won something this early morning. Wow, some of you say, yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, let's come back to this uh, thought here. The word united, they were together and they shared something in common. And it came to mind the Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when God's people dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down to the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord bestowed his blessings of life forevermore. How many of you do not yearn for this? The blessing of life forevermore. When the body of Christ, there's unity. Beautiful. That's where that word together. One of that meanings. Yeah? And then the other part there, it says that every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. Okay. I know that uh, in... Uh, in Wesley Church uh, here, in Wesley Methodist Church Clang here, some of the cell groups they gather every week, uh, other cell groups they gather alternate weeks. But if you read here, they gather every day. And they delight in gathering and meeting together because they know that the people there will meet the needs of one another. And that's why they yearn to be in the fellowship in the hopes. Then the third part of the word together. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. I love that last few words, with glad and sincere hearts. When we gather together, there are the smiles, there are the laughter, 
they are the joys. Because God has redeemed us. When we are together, we are to remember of what the Lord did in our lives and to give Him all glory and honor. Amen. So this passage here is actually known as the passage of the fellowship of believers. For those of you that knows uh, the Chinese dialect, Cantonese, uh, fellowship. Uh, okay. When you are in the same boat or you, you are in the same ship, you grow fellow, meaning that you grow a little bit more, you know, put on a little bit more weight. That doesn't mean that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. It is actually a compound word. Two words joined together, fellow and ship. And a compound word means like this, uh, from the back to the front. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in a ship together of this body of Christ. And what they do, they fellow, la, they fellow ship. La. Yeah. And the other compound word is uh, the word teamwork. So from the, from the back, which is uh, the word work, W-O-R-K, then from the front is the word team. It means working together as a team. Wow, now you know huh? the meaning of the compound word. And uh, you will look a bit smarter when you explain it. The other one, bellboy. It's a compound word. <laughs> you will see the boy with the, with the bell uh, in front of the hotel foyer. Well, bellboy means boy with a bell. Lah. <laughs> yeah, as simple as that. Okay, so a little bit of... Uh, of uh, of teaching here, huh? so, so that, oh, when you explain, uh, people look at you, wow, you, you are smart, okay? Yeah. So why do we gather in homes? Why do we gather in homes? There are three thoughts here that why we gather in homes. The first here, there is a sense of belonging where there is security and accountability. When you are part of a household, you can't walk in and walk out of the house as you like. In a house, the leader or the father or the mother or the parents, they have a responsibility. And in this case, the small group leader. Yeah, we are accounted not only to the small group leader, but also to one another. That is why when a church grows big, this is where we need to belong to a small group. Because the person can come in and out of the house and out of the church and no one notice how he or she is doing in his spiritual life. So when you are in a small group, there is that accountability. Not to check on you, but basically to show that care. How is your relationship with the Lord? Is there anything that we can pray for you? Yeah. So that sense of belonging. And then the other reason why we gather in homes, there is the identity. An identity where you are part of the family. There were many times that I've heard of small group members, they were saying that my small group, they are even closer than my biological family. How very true. Later, I will share some stories and then you will realize, wow, that is the truth of the matter. Yeah. And then uh, the other word is the word family. A home means a dwelling where family reside. And when there's a family that is in residence in the house, there is care, there is nurturing, there is feeding. Let's say we have a baby or a young child, you won't leave that little girl alone. You will make sure that she is fed well, she goes to school, yeah. and that she also rests, play, and sleep well. Yeah. So there is part and parcel of being in a family, like in the small group that you and I belong to. So the big idea of this message that I want to bring across very clearly is this. Small group is the pattern of community life and growth. Stick that in your mind. It is a pattern. It is something that we have to live in, 
live with it, okay, day in, day out, week in, week out. I uh, beg your indulgence, you see that I will sip uh, this uh, water on and off because I have this condition called dry mouth. Many years ago, exactly slightly over nine years, I had throat cancer, third stage. Okay. At that time, I didn't know whether I would make it or I would be here, but God has kept me. I went through two months of uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Wow, it was very intense. I lost my hair, I lost my saliva, I lost my swallowing ability, I lost my weight, okay. For us Asians, uh, when you lose your taste and you cannot enjoy your food, uh, well, better not to leave. Uh. But God said, my time is not up yet, uh. so that's why I'm here. So bear with me uh, when I sip the water. God is good. Amen. There's, uh, there's these three benefits that uh, we just want to be clear of when you and I belong in the cell group. So I just want to rekindle this so that there is a purpose why we have to go to a small group. Okay. Okay, don't go because uh, Reverend Gauri said, wow, please go to the small group. Go because this is the Holy Spirit that is saying it's good for you. Yeah. So the first benefit here is the word growing, growing. And it's taken from verses 42 to 43. Let me cement it from the word of God. Huh? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship of breaking bread and to prayer, everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. This is the small group that I belong to and uh, we were preparing for multiplication. <laughs> you will see that there is about 35 of us there. No way that a small group can continue to meet in my house. We need to multiply. Please don't use the word divide or split. Those are taboo words. Huh? Use the word that is scripted in the Bible. Huh? Multiplication or multiply. It sounds better. Because when we multiply, we know that the group is healthy. It is growing. So that when there's another new group, we know that another core team of members, they will rise up to be able to do icebreaker, to lead worship, and also to, to share the word. It is just like what we see here at the platform. There are the number of people that are leading worship by Eugenie, and also there's a team that they have risen up because of the gifting. And likewise, all of you, you have spiritual gift. Okay. All of us, all of us. Some of you, you have the spiritual gift of service. Yeah. So, serve lah, Ken. So there is a purpose of you and I belonging in a small group. So it's vitally clear to know what is the purpose why you are in a small group. What tasks are you to complete? What tasks are you to be in the cell group to serve together? So there's the need for clarity and we need to be very clear. We need to be very clear. So I'd like us here to remember two letters plus two letters. Yeah? So Everyone here, you repeat aloud with me together. Two E's and two M's. At a count of three, yeah? One, two, three. Two E's, two M's. Wonderful. So the first E here is the word edification. Wow, it's a big word, lah, but please don't be alarmed. It basically means to build up the body of Christ. And the small word or the root word is the word edify. 
edify. So to edify, this is what must happen. To love one another inside the small group, the small group must minister. So some of these small groups, they are known as care group. They show care. This is where ministry happens. For example, when you know one of the members is sick and well, hey, you are the carer. You can just WhatsApp or call the person. Hi, Mrs. Tan. I heard that you are not well. Can I pray for you? Wow. When that is the small step, then there is that voice of another member. Mrs. Tan will felt touch. Yeah? And in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24, 25, that basically explains about the word edification. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. As you see the day approaching, what does it mean? Basically, it means the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We better be prepared. We better be ready. Yeah. And then there are three letters there. It reminds us the edification. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. The word spur, you may have watched some cowboy show. Huh? Wow, this... This guy riding on the horse, and at the end of the boot of the hill, there is a spur. The horse is going at a canter, going at uh, her own pace. Then the cowboy said, hey, pick up some speed. So, you know, jab the spur at the side of the horse. And then that horse pick up speed. You see that image there? We are to spur one another on towards love and good deeds. There are so many things outside. When we are led by the Holy Spirit and obey, there are many good deeds that we can do, especially during this time of uh, pandemic. Moving on now to the initial uh, word called endemic. There are still many things that we can shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it exhort. Let us not give up meeting together. I, I prefer not to use the word meeting. Lah. When you come for meeting, lah, wow, it sounds so laborious. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm at this uh, level where, where I meet together uh, with, a, with a senior pastor every week. I tell you, wow. I prefer not to be in there. I prefer to be outside uh, to show God's love to others. But you know what? There is a purpose for meeting together. Basically to see how are you and how am I. We care for one another. And then it says, let us encourage one another. And all the more we should do that when we are preparing ourselves for the day approaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah? Basically it says that word there, encourage. I like the other part when I shorten it, the word courage. When we meet together, we want to give courage to one another. Church, can you live boldly for the Lord? All of us, we have a story to tell. How you came to know the Lord. And none of your friends can say that's not true. Shine for Jesus. Tell the story of how God transformed you. And we need this boldness and courage. And Acts 1.8 reminds me, and you shall receive the power, the Holy Spirit power, and be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Wow. The Lord reminds me very clearly. If I am ashamed of Him, He will be ashamed of me. 
In a nutshell, the word edification is to build one another up strong in Christ. Then the other E is the word evangelism. Evangelism is not found in the Bible, but it is, it is uh, used in another term or in another word. Uh, sharing life, the gospel, yeah, serving one another, meeting each other's needs. And that's how people came to know the Lord and how the church at the time grew. Yeah. Evangelism. To love one another outside, the small group must multiply. When you are in a small group that is healthy, that is growing, others will see. When I show the first picture where we had fun celebrating my birthday, the neighborhood was watching us. It was saying what was happening. How come there are so many young adults there and they are just uh, having fun? Even when we are gathered together during the cell group, when we worship, our neighbors notice. And many a times when the neighbors walk past, when I say hi, hello, they know that that is a Christian gathering. Is your life, is your gathering attractive, a fragrant aroma to the community around you? You see this picture here? This is a gathering that we had in my house and we had what we call a Christmas outreach. And there were close to 40 people that came. <laughs> and uh, we really had fun. We exchanged gifts. Actually, we didn't really exchange gifts. We actually bought gifts for our visitors, for our friends. We blessed them. And then we had a really great makan time. And I came in to share a short message, and I made an altar call. Please don't be intimidated, huh? You know what? There were a lot of prayer that were put in and the Holy Spirit moved. At the end, there were three salvations and two rededications. Wow. Rededication means those that were far from the Lord, they used to have a relationship, but on that night, they returned to acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior. All glory be to God. Yeah. So, this is what exactly it is. It must look outside. If not, the small group that you are in, it will fossilize. Some of you, you may have attended a seminar that I was the main speaker, you know. Um, you either evangelize or you fossilize. How very true, okay? Our lives really need to shine for Jesus. Okay? Can I encourage you? Take small steps. Don't do big steps. All of us, we can do something different. You are living in a neighborhood. You see your neighbor day in, day out. You will definitely know some of the needs of the auntie or the uncle or the young person beside you. Ask God, God, what can I do to shine for you? You will be surprised. God will place a word. God will ask you to do an action. Obey, step up, and you will see a big difference. That's what I did. During the lockdown, I asked the Lord, what can I do? And the Lord prompted me, go pick rubbish. What? Pastor picking rubbish? Okay. Well, I obeyed. I started small. The reason why it, it stuck me or it uh, basically stick in my mind, I exercise every morning. I walk about three to five kilometers. And when I see the roadside that were littered, you know, with what? Most of the time with this face mask. True or not, those of you that are doing brisk walk. And then, because they are spaced by the roadside, the trucks, the vendors, they will park their car, they will eat and drink, they will throw their water bottles, their plastics, their food packs all by the side. 
And each time when I pick up this rubbish, there is still that remnant of the fluid or the water that is in this bag. And then there were the attraction of pests and rodents. You know, why there is Aedes? Because there is that water containment that is not dealt with. So I took up this task. Nearly every week, I will get this little picker from the DIY shop, <laughs> go and perform my duty. I really do not want the neighbors to notice it. I will usually do it late in the morning when there are no walkers. Okay? And I quickly go into that area and quickly come out. One day, there was this senior man. As I was uh, picking up the rubbish, he was at the other side of the road. When we grow older, I'm growing older, huh? we tend to speak louder. The reason being is because we are, you know, hard of hearing. And that's why we need to talk louder. This senior man across the road was like shouting to me. Hey, he said, what are you doing? Wow, I got a shock of my life because I, I, I was uh, doing my picking of the rubbish. <laughs> then I look at him. I said, uh, sir, uh, well, you can see what I'm doing. I'm picking up the litters. Well, then we had some form of pleasantry. Then I went ahead and continued my task. And I didn't know this happened. She actually took out his smartphone and he clicked a few clicks. While I was, uh, my uh, back, you know, was uh, going down the uh, road uh, doing my bis bis business, uh, and he posted that shot into the community group chat that has 500 subscribers. And one morning, while I was doing my brisk walk, this neighbor, which I came to know when uh, somehow we came in contact, and she knows that I'm a pastor. She was in the house, just at the back of a gate. And as I was walking, she shouted, Hey, pastor, you are my hero. Wow. I said, what? I'm, I'm your hero? Tell me more. <laughs> then then I, I learned that he went into the group, ch uh, group chat and, uh, and he saw my picture. Wow, you want to be a heroine? Ask God. Maybe he ask you to go and pick up the rubbish. Okay. I only not pick up the rubbish. Uh. I also went to the DIY shop, uh, used my own money, uh, go and uh, buy about 20 to 30 sticks. I pray to God, who am I supposed to bless and give that stick to? Because when I give, I say to the person, hey, you help to clean out just around your place. Okay. Wow. When you do something, I tell you, the people notice. Number of times when I do that, there were strangers that came up to me and give that thumbs up. Once there was this garbage truck that was driving up the road. The driver stopped by the side. He peered out his head. I thought he was like, goodness, hey, don't do my work. Huh? <laughs> no. He basically was saying this, you know, put up his thumb and say, Bagus. Wow. Ask God, yeah, something will shine in your life. And not only your neighbor will say bagus, God will say bagus. Okay? Let's come back here. Let's come back here. Okay? So, I'd like us to, to note the summation of the two E's and the two M's. Huh? The effect inside has to affect outside. Yeah? So, two plus points here. First, we see the natural growth. In a cell, we would want to see that it is alive, it is organic, and we expect the cell to grow. Yeah. So, we grow in what? We grow in understanding the Word. Not only have knowledge, but in all things, God reminds us again and again, we are supposed to be wise builder, put into practice, 
the word of God. And then when we praise and when we worship together, the Holy Spirit will somehow minister to the needs and to the hurts of the member. Just like when we were singing the worship song. Wow, something happened. The peace of God was in your life, my life. Like uh, I released the word, some of us, we are worried. And God is saying this to us, I'm there for you. John 14, verse 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. And I do not give this peace as the world gives, so do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Because some of us here, I sense that you are afraid. Cling on to God no matter what. Yeah, then there's the other relationship, accountability, and that prayer together. We want to cover one another. And then the other plus point is the word discipleship, or we model. What do I mean by modeling? There, there, there are three steps for effective modeling. I want to give us an example. When we do hospital visit, let's say the small group leader goes hospital visitation. Bring along one of your members. So what you do is that in the hospital, in the ward, in the room, you do everything. Meaning, you know, how do you greet that patient? And then when there's a need, when you go to the hospital or to the ward, there is that prayer most of the time. Then this is how you approach in conversation to start that prayer. Yeah. So the member that is accompanying the small group leader is observing. So I do everything as the leader. Then the next hospital visitation, because of the exposure of this member, the leader do half and the member do half. Okay. Then the third visit to the hospital, what happens here is that, you know, the member now does everything and I as the leader, I am there, you know, to observe and as well as to pray, okay, for the situation in the ward. And later, I will affirm the person, the member, wow, you really did so well when you asked for that patient, auntie, how can I pray for you? And when you pray, I really sense that the Spirit of God was moving in the patient's life. Yeah. In doing feedback, always affirm first. Yeah? Yeah. Then you bring in the area of Then the second point about being in a cell group, the benefit here is the word giving, giving generously. And it's taken from verses 44 to 45. Eh? All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. In this context here, of course, the giving here is where there is the belonging of these uh, people and they, and they get. Uh, it is financial giving. But I want to stress here, the giving is more than just that. One of the most precious giving is our time. And many, many a time when I gave that time to others, I tell you, they are so highly appreciated. Tomorrow night, I'll be conducting a wake service. And I was uh, basically liaising with this widow. And she was basically kind of a lost because uh, the, the son was overseas and she has to like arrange the preparation for her late husband. What happens when I gave time to her, when I assure her, that all the arrangements will be done well. I arranged for the pastors to be able to helm the wake services and the funeral. And I said, just go to the funeral director. They will be able to help you and handle the arrangement from A to Z. That brought so much comfort to this lady. 
They had everything in common. Perhaps those who had much might have the less and so be kept from the temptation of abundance. And they who had little might have a little more and so be kept from the temptations of want and poverty. There was this couple, an Indian couple, an expatriate from India. They joined DUMC. They were assimilated to a small group. And uh, the wife, this couple, the lady, was uh, in the final term of her pregnancy. The cell group member, they rally around to source for a stroller, to source for a baby net, to take care of the preparation of the coming of the baby. And once that child was due, you know what? Being in a foreign land, <laughs> not knowing what to do when uh, she is in confinement, the members stepped up. One of them cooked for the family. Another one uh, went and do grocery for them. Okay. And you know, the husband is working and the wife is, you know, not free to clean the place. Another one arranged to clean up the place. Wow. They had something in common. And each of the members, in that sense, they sacrificed. They gave. As I was sharing myself uh, 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 about my third stage cancer, when uh, my cell group and, and, and the church knows that I was having cancer, a lot of us thought that it is a curse. But when I went through it, I realized that there were some great learning lessons. And then when I reflected, I give thanks to God for what I went through. There was this uh, cell leader's wife that for two weeks, nearly every day, she will buy fresh young coconuts for me. Yeah. Because going through radiotherapy is no joke. It's very heaty and I will form ulcers in my mouth. And God really kept me. There were six of the church members that approached me or texted me and said, Pastor, I will pray for you unceasingly. There were hundreds that were keeping me in prayer. And when I know of this, and when I went through this, I am so thankful that the body of Christ really loved me. Because I know God loves me. And he says that my time is not up yet. What is the first thing? Uh, point about uh, the benefit of being in a cell group. What is the word? G. Growing, right? Together. What is the second one? Giving. And then this is the third one. Huh? The gladness in heart. Verse 46. Every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God. You see here, there's an overwhelming gladness of once these people that were lost, they were found. Of once they were living in darkness and now they are in the light of the Lord. And once they were poor, but now they were rich. What I meant here is poor in spirit. Now they are rich because they know the purpose of living. Once they were weak, but now they are strong. Once they were sick, and now they are healed. Once many of us, we were, or some maybe still worldly, <laughs> but we are transformed. We know that our abode, our home, is actually heavenward. It is not earth. One day, all of us will go. The word of God mentioned this very clearly. Our destination on earth 
is death. Yeah. So all of you here, you are wise investors. Look into the word of God. What are some lives that we need to invest in that will last for eternity? I like this uh, other passage from First Thessalonians verses five, uh, verses sixteen to eighteen, chapter five. Huh? Maybe like to encourage one another by reading together. Can we read together at the count of three? One, two, three. Rejoice always, without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. So three thoughts here about daily living in gladness. One is to rejoice always. Rejoice always. I like this uh, proverb. And uh, a cheerful heart or a merry heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. How very true. Can I urge us, when we see someone put on the smile of Jesus, there were feedbacks about me. Pastor, how come you look so serious? One? <laughs> I realized that I took myself too seriously. Smile, la, laugh more. La. <laughs> and the word of God here says, you know, when there's lightness, in our spirit, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Our life is an attraction. Yeah. And then the other one, praying without ceasing. How's your devotional time? How's your quiet time? I hope it's not so quiet. I hope that we have not been missing it. It is, it is so, so very vital that the most important time of the day is seeking the Lord. If you have not been doing, can you commit to, I urge you, one minute, then build that up. A lot of time when I seek the Lord, I have lots of responsibilities on my plate. You know what? I will work the best, I will do my best. When night time comes, when I cannot do, where I need to rest and sleep, who is doing the work? It is God himself. The next morning when I wake up, hey, the problem is already solved. Not so big after all. I am not the Savior. God is the Savior. Yeah. Then uh, in everything, give thanks. Can I encourage all of us? Let us be thankful people. Uh. Don't complain, don't, don't grumble. Uh. <laughs> the Word of God reminds us, hey, Stop complaining, stop grumbling. Or else, uh, wow, your face doesn't look good. Like your face and my face don't look good. Okay. Can you give thanks? At the beginning of each day, do this really well. Give thanks to God. Five areas or five things before you begin the day. When you wake up, you say, Lord, I give thanks that I'm alive, that I can walk. That my wife is beside me. That I have breakfast. Many things. I've conducted quite a number of funerals. In fact, more than 300. There are times where the person had passed away, they died in their sleep. Oh, dear. So we better learn to give thanks. Yeah. Just a quick recap of the three benefits and I have given you the alliteration eh, of the three Gs. So what is the first G? Growing together. Yeah? So be in the small group so that you can grow together. Your small group leader cares for you and loves you and praying for you. Yeah? What's the second G? Very good. Yeah? Give ge generously. Not necessary money, yeah? Your time. Can you give generously to your loved ones? Especially to your parents that do not know Jesus. Your siblings. That's what happened to me. I took my time with my mother. 
I stay in Subang Jaya. My mom stays in Dabansara Utama. She is no longer around. Every Monday evening, nearly every Monday evening, <laughs> I will go to a place. I say, Mom, let's go for dinner. She is... Uh, she was having a bent back. Huh? She bent back. And she trudged very slowly because there was pain in her knees. <laughs> Whenever I get there, she will walk slowly to my answer, which the, the back seat is a little bit high. She will just push herself up and sit behind. And then I will drive her to Moy Hao Restaurant, my restaurant. Okay. No, 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 it's not my restaurant. Because I take them there so often, like three times a week. Uh, they say that is MH Restaurant. Okay. When we reach to MH Restaurant, she will come up by herself, walk up, you know, to the inclined path and go to her favorite seat and I will order her favorite dish, asam fish tilapia. And usually my wife is there, my children is there. And I will whisper to my dear wife, darling, you know, huh? that I'm not serving you first, there's a purpose. Huh? I treat my mom like a queen. When the dish comes, I give her the best part. I will bring the gravy, the paste, and put it on the fish. Other dish comes, she gets the full attention. Be persistent. And because her knees was weak, when I visit her, wow, I was really scared, huh? Okay, but I ask God for strength, for boldness. Ma, can I pray for your niece? But she was uncertain. Okay. So I laid my hands on her knees and I prayed for her. At the end, she said this, Hey, why my knees feel warmer? Wow. Then I said, oh, yeah, this is my God. Then from that time onward, continue to pray for her. You know what? Before she passed on to glory, just a couple of months, I've shared with her many times. Finally, she said yes. And then when she said yes, I grabbed the opportunity. I said, Mom, I'd like to baptize you. To have a son as a pastor, I've got privileges. Okay. So in the witnesses of my sisters, they were at that time non-believers yet. And my family, my wife was standing beside me. Mom, what I got, let's see Lee. You know, Sailaya, you know, to baptize you. I'm a Teochew now, so my Teochew is not so good. Okay. Anyway, mom said yes, but she was frail and weak, and we cannot really hear her clearly. My wife, uh, the smarter one, nudged me. Hey, dear, ask your mother to, to answer loudly. Lah. So I made another call. I said, Mom, can you say it loudly that you want to be baptized? Wow! She was at this uh, second level. Uh, and she said, What? I? <laughs> the ground floor people can, can hear that, you know. Wow, it's such a great joy. Wonderful. I baptized. One after another. My fifth sister had fourth stage uh, stomach cancer also passed away about a year ago. She also came to know the Lord. I'll tell you this story uh, at another time, if I am back here, okay? At 2.15 a.m., I received a call. I was having a really, really good sleep. And the phone non-stop ringing. Finally, I took up the receiver. Oh, who was at the other end? It was one of my cell members. He was saying, my wife is about to deliver, to deliver a baby, eh? not to deliver some grocery to me. Eh? So, obviously, what would be my re response? So I said to him, send your wife to the hospital. Of course, I said it nicely. Lah. But he keep explaining certain things I couldn't understand. So I passed the receiver to my wife. Dear, you may understand better Ngai, what he's trying to say. After saying the same thing, my wife said, send to the hospital. She also couldn't get it. She said to me, we better rush over to their place. 
So we, we quickly rushed, la, you know, uh, we weren't dressed, la, we didn't brush our teeth, la, just rushed over. Okay. When we reached to the member's house, that time he has two sons. The second boy was in front of the gate when he saw the headlight of my car drawing near. He was like shouting, huh? Ah, pastor, 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 pastor. He was standing there close to 15 to 20 minutes, shouting, crying for help to the neighbors. None of them responded. So both me and my wife, we rushed in. Just at the base of the staircase. Oh, it's okay. Wow, I'm going to illustrate. Ah, and this is a powerful illustration. Okay. What happened was that the older boy at the base of uh, the stairs was saying, Pastor, go up, go upstairs, go upstairs. She, he also was equally excited. So we went upstairs. When we were about to approach the master bedroom, wow, the scene that caught, caught us, uh, really, I still remember so vividly. You know what? The whole sack of the baby came out from the mother's womb and it was on the master bed. Okay. Of course, as a man, it was not convenient for me to go in. So my wife, the braver one, went in. I was standing outside, beside, beside the phone. So I quickly called 999. Wow. You know what? The other end, uh, the, the teller, oh, I said, Hanta ambulance, Hanta ambulance. Then she was like, nothing happened. Upper pasal. Upper bully buat. Well, after talking for a couple of minutes, uh, I was quite upset and fed up. Uh, so I put down the receiver. Then I recall this pediatrician. I, I call up the doctor. Then the doctor, you know what, gave instruction through the phone, you know. And I relayed uh, what to be done to my wife. Ah, go get a container of warm water. Soak the scissors in. <laughs> Make sure it's germ-free. Okay, cut the umbilical cord, cut. Wow. Then you know what? The, the husband uh, already pricked the sack. Uh. Wow, and all the fluid came out. Uh. You know, it was bloody, it was messy. I still remember all kinds of colors, you know. Okay, <laughs> grey color, la, red color, a little bit green. Okay. And when the baby came out, the baby was, was you know, was all a little bit slippery. La. <laughs> but the baby was healthy. You know what? My wife, I watched too much Korean dramas. <laughs> Took up the slippery baby, eh, trying to give some oxygen and breath. La. Wow, go and smack the baby's rear end. Eh. Smack like that. Hey, when you smack, eh, smack. Eh. So that there's a little bit of pain. She, she like sayang like that, sayang like that. You know? So there's no response. She watched quite a lot of Korean drama. Huh? So she remembered this scene. Put the little finger in. Take out the mucus. Huh? <laughs> but of course, uh, we, we don't know how deep to go. Uh, just in case uh, anything happened. Oh. You know what? The baby turned from pink to light blue to darker blue to even darker. And we know that oxygen was not going in to the brain. And we decided we better rush the little one to the hospital. Wow. So my wife at the back seat, I was the driver. That night, that early morning, I drove faster than Lewis Hamilton. And I broke the traffic lights, red lights rule. I broke two of them. Okay, I just want to confess to you. <laughs> God knows. Uh. From that USJ3 to Subang Jaya Medical Center, it will take about eight minutes. I did it in four minutes. I drove to the emergency entrance. My wife quickly go in. I parked my car. And when I walk into the emergency ward, just before I reached that curtain, this was what exactly I heard. Like the mother who brought that child, that crying child. Hey! Wow! 
that was the best sound. When someone, especially a baby, is crying, that means life. That is a good sound. Oh, I praise God. I praise God. You know, along the way to SJMC, you know how I pray? My prayer was just these few words. God save him. God save him. God save him. God save him. Wow. Not like the prayer that Chi Kai made. Huh? Wow. So, wow. Huh? Sometimes uh, when you do not know what to pray, uh, when you are really crying out in desperation, it's okay. Say the same words. Maybe God hears you better. Huh? It, is, it is just like the parable. Huh? Wow, of the persistent widow. Who never let up. I want food. I want food. Okay, finally, uh, food was given to the lady. Okay, let's come back here. You know what? This, uh, this child now, he is a 23-year-old young man. Uh, that is the young man that uh, God saved. Lah. We were just being there to be available. Uh, Zila. Okay. So all praise be to God. Yeah. Friends, uh, this morning, before I end, uh, later, uh, right after the, uh, uh, the three amens, uh, uh, any one of you, you may have prayer needs. Uh, I invite you to come out. It's like to minister to you. Uh, together with some leaders here, yeah. And um, I just sense that uh, this very word uh, that I just want to repeat again. Some of us, we are afraid. And I want to release this word to you, that God is there and God will hold your hand. Can you cling on to him no matter what? And he is the one that has been there and always will be there to take you through. And if you are not in a small group, can I encourage you to join one? Yeah. And don't expect the cell leader to meet your needs. As you go there, ask God, how can I be a blessing to the cell group? Amen. Okay.